Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So what we're going to do today is answer a question someone asked me recently, and it's actually a technique. Let me go ahead and turn this off. It's actually a technique that I came across some time ago, and I thought it would be cool to address, but I never got around to it. So let me uh, zoom in on my timeline here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and show you an example here. If I spawn in the day old drag, whatever, ender dragon, there we go. If I sound a little bit weird today, I apologize, but I've got like some kind of issue where like there's some soreness on the inside of my mouth or whatever and it's making it hurts and it's making me talk weird so i apologize if i sound a little weird anyway totally relevant to the tutorial as you can see here i got an ender dragon some of you may be well aware of this but for those of you who are not if you wanted to animate the ender dragon let's just say his dang old tail as you can see here when you click on it you get these sections and like the further up you click then the more uh, you know, it selects the other ones that are parented to it. As you can see there, these are all parented pieces of the tail here. And if I select the last one, it opens it up as the last one there. And when I click on this, I can do like this. And his tail kind of does this number and it doesn't look very good as you can see. So the technique you might use here to animate his tail is you would go to like each piece and kind of rotate a little bit, go to the next piece rotate a little bit, etc, etc, and that would be very time consuming and difficult to animate uh, for, you know, anything with any length to it. So what you can do is click on one. So we have all these parts here and I'm going to go ahead and just click, not do that. I'm going to click and drag over them if I can. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and drag this box and it's going to bring it up and select all of those. Alternatively, you can just click one and hold the shift key and then click the rest if you have trouble getting that box to work. Like sometimes it's a little bit finicky and this is a more surefire way to do it. Anyway, as you can see here, we have all of these parts selected on the timeline now. And what I can do is when I rotate, you'll see we actually probably wanted to select those in reverse so that our rotation point would be there, but we can still work with this. As you can see there, it rotates like this and gives you a much more natural movement with a lot less work. So I can do that. I can grab the other axis and make it curve this way. We can grab this one and make it curve any number of ways and like twist up like a pretzel and things. And that's how you can animate something like that and get a much more natural and like easily achieved look that uh, is, is a lot better than what you would normally get. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and delete. Whoops, there's my dash bar. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go ahead and delete that and we're gonna bring in just a cube and select it down there and there we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is dang old change our rotation point. I wanna bring it up to, I guess, positive eight on that and I'm gonna bring it up here so that we're rotation points there. And uh, basically the question that I got is how you would animate a rope, I think. So that's basically the technique we're gonna use is uh, the same thing that we use for the Ender Dragon. So what I'm gonna do is have this dang old cube here and I'm gonna scale it down. Let's just say we're trying to create a rope. We're gonna go to point one. And uh, as you can see there, it makes it pretty small. And then I'm gonna duplicate it. And then I'm gonna take this one and parent it by clicking on it and dragging it over the top. Otherwise, you can use the uh, properties over here, of course. And I'm gonna go ahead and zero out this one's position and drag it down. And of course, it's inheriting the scale. We don't want that, at least not for this instance, or we can go ahead and do that and have it that way. So you can turn off the scale. That could produce some problems, or you can just you know get rid of the scale setting because since it's inheriting the scale, a scale of one on the parented one is gonna be the same size as the parent if that makes sense. I think I explained it in a dumb way, but I hope you get it. And uh, these blocks are of course 16 uh, pixels or whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and make that negative 16 and that lines them up perfectly. All right, so all I've got to do now is continue duplicating these by selecting the parented one and duplicating it. And then I'll bring it down. That's gonna be a multiple of 16. So we're gonna go negative 32. And then we have three pieces and I'm just gonna leave it at that for now, just for this example. You can make it as long as you want or needs to. Okay, so basically what we've got here is our little rope. Let's just pretend that it is. And uh, let me go ahead and change the color real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on inherit color for these two. I should have done that to begin with. And that way when I change the color of this one, 
it will dang old inherit color, man. But you won't. Let's just say it's like a brown rope. I don't know. Something like that. That actually kind of looks like poop. Anyway, we're just going to go with that. All right, guys. My apologies. I ran into some issues here, and I had some time figuring out what I was doing wrong. What you want to do, I actually brought this back down to two. And another thing I did is I, I scaled up the Z. It may be Y for you, but I scaled it up to be 0.2, so it's twice as long. So you end up with these little sections here. My goodness, I can't believe how dumb I am. Okay, so we've got this set up, and you don't necessarily have to extend it. I wanted them to be more rectangular, so I made it longer, so that's what I did. But that's neither here nor there. So what we're gonna do, instead of duplicating it and having it parented all to the same one, just like the dragon's tail, we're gonna go ahead and select this one and parent it to that one. And then we're gonna do it again. Let's just make sure we've got this covered, and we're gonna parent it to the next one. So you end up with this kind of hierarchy of parenting, just like the dragon's tail was. Oh, now with all that set up, we're gonna drag over and select all of our cube parts, and when we rotate, we get the same effect. So on the frame one here, let's just say we're gonna have our rope at this position, and then I'm gonna go say, it really depends on how fast, you know, the scale of things, the, the size of everything. But uh, we're just gonna go to frame 40. And we're gonna bring it up like this. Then we're gonna go say frame 75. And we're gonna bring it out like this. You know, you kinda want it to go uh, slower. Like it's gonna move faster as it goes and less distance. If I had, you know, if I didn't get all screwed up with my rigging here, I would be able to explain that better. But for now, that's what you get. So uh, there we go like this. As you can see, the keyframes are getting closer together. That's basically the point here. Uh, less time will take place because it's going less distance, something like that. And for our last one, I'm gonna do a little trick here and I'm going to even that out. And what we're gonna do is we basically get, let me go ahead and zoom out on this. This is what we get for now. Doesn't look very good. And it's like so. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and select all these keyframes. We're gonna come down here to our dang old transitions, man, under the keyframe tab. And I'm gonna give it uh, this one right here, the ease in and out sign. And what you should get is a relatively realistic looking uh, motion there. And as you can see, that last one screwed up, but I'm just gonna make this a little bit easier on myself. I'm gonna select only this section of keyframes here, and we're gonna give it the bounce or the ease out elastic and uh the, this will be dependent upon how far your last keyframe is so we'll uh have to adjust that probably but what we end up with is that and as you can see that goes way too fast so what we want to do is drag this out and see what kind of result we can get and that's still too fast so let's go on out to that far there we go. That's what you're talking about. So that's about 130 keyframes out from this one. Again, it depends on what you're animating and whatnot. But basically what you end up with is a rope that dango comes out and it swings. And it kind of eases in. Like you got this really subtle movement here, which is why I like this keyframe. But you, of course, have to extend this out really far in order to make it work, which could be kind of clumsy. But uh, I think it really gives you that last little bit of wobbliness you might want without having to animate all those little movements so uh that's pretty much the basics of it that's just a basic like how to make a rope or even a tail move however you want it to go and it doesn't look too terrible i gotta say at least for that little bit of work that doesn't look too bad uh you know this is kind of an idea of like maybe a bigger object if you wanted something that's smaller you might would have it move a little faster and things like that but that's pretty much it so that's it, guys. I hope that tutorial was helpful. I hope you learned something, at least maybe the technique or something, <laughs> you know. Uh, sorry about the clunkiness and whatnot, but it is what it is. So that's going to be it. Let's go ahead and dang old do this. We're going to have it running in loop. There we go. So that's going to be it, guys. Once again, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you were inspired at the very least. If you liked the video, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Become a citizen today. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets, and I'll see you guys in the next video.